Since we last spoke at the IATA conference in Istanbul, it seems as if the picture is continually improving. You have that headwind of higher oil prices, but at the same time, travel demand has really been recovering since COVID and is staying resilient. How are you reading the market right now? So I think you're absolutely right. I remember going on camera a number of years ago, suggesting that when the pandemic started to ease and travel restrictions would start to allow people to get back to some normality, revenge tourism would be a phenomenon. And I think since then, of course, we've seen it go off like a fire hydrant, so to speak. There's no signs of it easing off, certainly in this geography. Uh, demand for flights into Riyadh in particular, it's 93% point-to-point -point traffic. So only 7% here is transferring somewhere else. The demand currently far outstrips supply. The highest yield in ticket price per kilometre in the world at the moment is Dubai to Riyadh. Why? Again, demand is far outstripping supply. So the mandate we have couldn't be any clearer in terms of why. But I also said before, we've also got the fastest growing economy within the G20. So this one is going to be one heck of a ride, just keeping up with it as well. It doesn't get any better than this in the world of aviation. So if there's one thing to watch in 2024, what is it? So I think, look, there's uncertainty in the world. There's uncertainty in business. And that's a constant, right? Particularly commercial aviation. There are always challenges out there in regard to the above and the many other unknown unknowns. I guess for us, because we're in a startup phase, there's just so many things to do. The one commodity God didn't give enough of to any of us is time. So we're going to cherish every second of that because we need to move quickly. So what's your message to those competitors like Emirates and Etihad who say he can't do it? So Emirates, Qatar, Etihad, the world-class airlines, they've got amazing brands and incredible product offerings. I think going forward in the same way, if you speak to people from North America and China that may have been to Europe, when they get home, people say to them, where have you been? They say Europe. Where did you go? We went to Rome. We went to Paris. We went to London. Why? Perhaps Rome, because they wanted to see the Colosseum. Why did they go to Paris? Maybe the Champs-Élysées. London, maybe they wanted to go shopping. It was the destination attraction as opposed to the boundary as to why they went there. And they say they went to Europe. I believe in the future, people will say they went to Arabia, international Arabia, and they may well connect a number of the other amazing destinations. What I'm trying to say is, I think everybody wins here. We're not here to create yet another kind of transfer hub, simply because the demand for point to point is so great as I explained before. There's amazing growth potential within this part uh, of the region. We need to serve our citizens and allow the world to connect through Riyadh into the kingdom.